It's not about motivation. Winners need discipline. Wake up and win today. Discipline comes from within. Boxing King Media in association with the, the Riyadh season. Delighted to be joined by Kevin Lerana and his sports physiotherapist, uh, Mr. Um, you're known as Matty Massage. Yeah, easiest way to describe me, yeah. That's how everyone knows me as Matt Massage. I guess anyone's wondering, his name's Matt and he, he, he's an expert in massaging because some people may not even get that. Kevin, how you doing? We, we spoke on a Zoom call a few weeks ago we're in uh, Riyadh and as I said to you earlier, you're a big bloke. <laughs> Thanks, man. You know, just great to be here. Phenomenal, phenomenal to meet you. you know, heard a lot about you and listened to you a lot. But it's just great to be here and uh, taking part in Riyadh season. You had to make a statement and I know the task ahead is a big one. But that's when I rise to the occasion. I'm just curious, Kevin. Um, obviously, I met you for the first time, and the first thing that came to my mind was, like, geez, this guy's big. Do you get that a lot? People who meet you for the yeah. first time and say, you're. Because obviously, seeing you on TV against yeah. Daniel Dubois, you didn't, you didn't look that big. But. Yeah. I think sometimes, obviously, the TV can distort the image, but a lot of people say, you're a lot bigger in real life than you are on TV. Maybe it's because I'm a bit shorter and a bit, a bit stocky, you know? So you maybe you look bigger in real life than you would on TV. But obviously, compared to the big heavyweights, Pretty normal, I guess. Yeah. Those guys are big. Fair play, man. I spoke to um, the manager of um, Jaya Pattaya and uh, your opponent, Justice Huni, and he basically said that um, he feels that your potential, the back end of your career, uh, and obviously they're, they're taking you on in Justice's ninth fight, which is a big statement for somebody mm -hmm. like yourself because you fought Daniel Dubois literally a few fights ago. Yeah. Um, do you think there's underestimation there or do you think it's just, it's just that good that they're willing to take a risky fight against you like that? Look, obviously they believe in their, their charge, you know, they believe in um, Justice Huni. Obviously he's got a good amateur pedigree. He's fairly new in the pros. I think he's only had eight professional fights, but obviously they back him. They're backing their boy and, and rightfully so. But uh, I back myself too. So you said they believe that I'm at the tail end of my career. Yeah. I'm only getting started. I had no amateur fights. I've been in there 32 times as a professional with no amateur fights. I'm only getting going and coming into myself really now. So it's a big risky fight for Justice Huni. It's a risky fight for me too. But that's what it's about. You know, uh, His Excellency is all about making those big fights and, and Riyadh season is about making big fights happen. And I'm just happy to be here and I know what I have to do to win. Good stuff. And I was going to uh, jump over to Matt and some people may have seen Matt working with Tyson Fury and just want to um, let us know, Matt, how this relationship came about. I want to say relationship, I mean working relationship in case somebody <laughs> gets the wrong idea. Um, so it just looked like that the way you sat together, you're about to announce <laughs> it. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> um, so basically, the first interaction I had with Kevin actually... Uh, Messaged me on Instagram a while back saying if Tyson needed any sparring for Usyk, let him know. Um, and then we actually did need some sparring. So I said to Spencer, I said, why don't you get Kevin Lorena over from South Africa? So he came over and obviously helped Tyson out. And then obviously we got along really well. And he's, um, he's trainer Peter, both great guys. And um, we maybe spoke about doing some work together in South Africa one day. Um, and obviously, you know, at the end of the camp, Tyson got cut, unfortunately, so the fight got postponed. And then um, the next day I spoke to Kevin and I was on a plane to Johannesburg <laughs> getting ready for this next fight. So, um, yeah, just, we got along really well. Felt like we'd known each other for a long time and um, I was just grateful that they got me over for the opportunity. And South Africa, a wonderful country, got looked after incredibly well. Um, so, yeah, thank Kev a lot for the opportunity. Good stuff, man. And, and I'd just be curious to know from your point, Kevin, um, some people will be wondering, like, you know, there's people still out there saying, oh, just do it old school. You don't need physiotherapists. You don't need S&C coaches. You don't need nutritionists. So just from your point of view, uh, what, what, how does uh, Matt benefit being in the camp? Look, look I mean, you always got to remember that boxing, the pugilist sport, you require your, your head boxing trainer to teach you everything you need to know in that ring and to hone your skills. But it's your duty as a fighter to, to be that 1% more professional every day. And that's where the sports therapists come in, the high quality conditioning coaches, the uh, nutritionists and that, because that all adds to your game. It makes you a better product for your trainer in the gym. So when you're working with your trainer in the gym and he's trying to teach you skills, you're a better, a well-formed product. So you can give him, give him more than what he requires. You know what I mean? So I think it's all about being professional. Some athletes maybe don't believe in it, but I'm a true believer in the recovery 
uh, massaging, sports therapy, eating well, because that makes me a better fighter for my trainer. So he's got something better to work with every day. Uh, that, that's fascinating there, because obviously on your part, Matt, you're, you're basically working with what, one of the greatest fighters of this era, you know, Tyson Fury. Mm -hmm. um, he could probably get anybody in the country if he wants and he's picked you. Or why do you think he's picked you? Um, it's a good question. I mean, to be honest, when I started working with Tyson, I think it was, what, five, six years ago, he didn't have anyone doing what I do for him. Um, so I think it was just a bit of a right place at the right time for me. Uh, I was working with Isaac, Isaac Law prior to that. He was obviously very good friends with Tyson and then he, he put me in touch with Tyson and Tyson brought me on board full time. And I think fighters now maybe see the worth in my work as they probably are getting a little bit older. And when I say old, I don't mean old, old, but I mean like when they, when they hit 30 really, you know, and you know, you've been boxing for 10 years, 12 years, obviously fighters start to get niggles and a few more miles are getting put on the clock. So I think they realise as they get, you know, to the middle, to the back end of the career, it's time to start looking after themselves a little bit better. But, you know, I asked myself that question as well. Like, obviously, I must be good, must be good enough at, at the job. Otherwise, Tyson would have got rid of me by now. Um, so we're on year six together, and uh, we've got a good relationship still. So I must be doing, I must be doing something, right? Well, I think people will be out there curious to know, and if they don't know, you, you also do like normal members of the public as well. It's not high performance athletes, so if anyone's interested in getting treated by you, how, how can they get in touch? So on Instagram, mattmassage 94 is my handle. Um, I'm based in Liverpool and around the North West, but to be honest, I've travelled pretty much everywhere around the UK, and now I'm getting opportunities like what Kevin and Peter have gave me to travel to countries like South Africa and obviously Tyson brings me over to Saudi as well so listen I'll go anywhere with with anyone really if if it's right for me and obviously they want me to work with them so yeah okay well we started this conversation about you guys working together and I was on about going anywhere anywhere so so Kevin um, just regards to you know that I did an interview earlier on with um, Mike who obviously manages uh, justice and uh, Obviously, one of the things I questioned him was like, why are they so confident taking a young guy who's 24 in his ninth fight uh, against himself with so much experience? Um, you must have followed Justice's career. Now, how good is he compared to say like your toughest opponent on paper was probably say Daniel Dubois? Is that a fair mm. assessment? Yeah, I think so. How good Look, is he compared to him? It's hard to say. I mean, he's he's young. He's got youth on his side. He's like I said, got a good amateur pedigree. Mm. So they believe in the guy. He's explosive. You know, he throws good combinations on the inside and the outside. So he's got the attributes. But I think there's more to fighting than that. There's more to fighting than just being explosive. There's more to fighting than just, you know, standing and trading. You go, ring IQ is a lot, it plays a massive role. Being smart in there, listening to your instructions, executing the game plan. And when you get on in your career, as I've been 11 years as a pro now, you start to learn that more and more and more as you get on in your career and you get a lot more experience. Like I said, I haven't had any amateur fights, so for me it's been 32 straight fights as a professional, which has its pros and cons. Obviously you don't have that amateur grooming, but it also does it and it allows you not to learn bad habits. So all I know is what I've been taught by my head trainer for the past 11 years. And uh, look, they believe in their charge and they can believe in themselves It's good. It means you're going to make, make a good fight. I believe in myself. My trainer believes in me. And uh, just to allude to their question, they said I was hesitant on taking the fight. Because I don't need Justice Huni. Justice Huni needs me. And that's the only reason why I didn't want to take the fight. I'm a fighting man. I think you know that. I think the UK fans know that. And uh, Justice Huni needs me. The reason why I didn't take the fight because I'm currently in a purse bridge for the WBC Bridgeweight. So there was a bit of contention whether I can still do it or not. We've got special permission from Mauricio Suleiman that I can go up and fight this fight. So I said, cool, game on. Is it a risky fight for me? Of course it is. But just as much risk, if it's just as much risk for him. But you know, on that basis, if you win, surely you're not going to be wanting to go to a bridge weight. Surely you, there could be a bigger heavyweight fight set for you. Yeah, look, I mean, I never look past the the mountain that I got. I always look at what what's in front of me, and that's just the Sunni right now. Obviously, you know, I think to dabble between the two weight divisions is is always going to be ideal for me because I am a smaller heavyweight, and you'd be considered a a big bridge weight. But um, wherever the big fights come, you know, I think the most important thing in the sport is, is winning and winning well. So wherever the big fights come, I'm game. You know, I said to myself, I don't want to put a, a time stamp on how long I have left, whether I say four years, five years. I want to go until I can't go no more. 
until I, until my when my ambition draws out. And one thing I can tell you, my ambition is limitless because I know what I want to achieve. Okay, well, uh, like I said to uh, them guys, you know, may the best man win. It should be a fascinating fight because I think on paper you got an eight to no young guy versus an experienced 32, 32 and two fighter. So it should be a fascinating fight. Mm -hmm. uh, just want to get your opinion on um, Saudi as a whole. I know you've, you've had time to walk around the resort. Um, you know, what do you make of Saudi Arabia as a country and just the hospitality here? No, the hospitality is really good. It really, really is good. You know, um, we've really been looked after. Obviously, I was here before with uh, Tyson and, and his team and Spencer, and they looked after us so well. The guys from Cello looked after us well, as well as um, very grateful for His Excellency. They're, they're making it happen. They're changing the landscape landscape of boxing at the moment, and I'm just grateful to be a part of this this opportunity and this time in this era. So just soaking it all up, but it really is amazing, and the hospitality has been phenomenal. Good stuff. And Matt, final word uh, with you. Uh, how do you see this fight going? I think that, listen, I'm only the, f the physio, but from my opinion, I think they've maybe took this fight too early. Um, and I think they're trying to use Kevin's name to try and get a leg up as a good step up for them. But I think they're going to be um, rudely awakened from, from what I've seen, what Kevin's capable of. Um, so, yeah, I think, they've took, I think it's a step too far for him too early. And I think Kev will go in there and I think he could stop him. Okay, Kevin, any last messages to your friends, uh, family, friends in South Africa that may be watching? Of course, always grateful for, for all my support, you know, all the people back home in South Africa who support me, those around the world, and, and just tune in and, and stay tuned for some good boxing. Lorena vs. Hooney, I can promise you it's going to be electric. Thank you. May the best man win. Thank you. 100%. Thank you. Listen, I got a question for you. Where can discipline take you? Discipline points you towards your goals.